Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this video is all about solving quadratic equations and I know some of you already or you're just watching it just to see how I'm going to do this but you uh, may learn something new or you might just reinforce what you already know. Um, so I have some questions already here. This is going to be a slightly long video so I am likely to break this into three different um, videos. So this will be part one and then there's going to be a part two and most likely there's going to be a part three all on quadratic equations. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is the general form of a quadratic equation. It is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, um, however, you know that the only reason you will call anything a quadratic equation is if there exists the variable squared. Okay, if the highest uh, power of the variable is two, that is in this case, it is squared and there's no higher power uh, and that's the only important thing. Everything else could, could be there or not be there. For example, if you look at this example, there is no term containing just x. So it's just this term and this term. And in this case, a here is 1, and c, for this question, if it had moved to this side, would be negative 9. You see the same case here. Um, well, the c is now positive 9. These are two completely different expressions. I'm going to talk about them. If you look at this, um, well, this doesn't have a c. It has the terms. It has the first two terms. It doesn't have the constant term. This one doesn't have the middle term. You see how it could be, and this one has everything together. And this huh, looks a little bit different from what we've been talking about. Okay, so, and that's what this video is gonna be about, the different forms in which quadratic equations show up and how to treat them. So, let's get into this. Okay, the first one I'm gonna solve is this one. And as you can see, once you get um, x squared isolated, you might as well just take the square root of both sides. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which will give me... Okay, what will I get when you take the square root of x squared? That's where the first lesson begins, okay? When you take the square root of x squared, your answer is supposed to be x. But on the right-hand side, you will have to get plus or minus the square root of 9. Okay, now, this is very important. When you take the square root of x squared, your answer is x. But on the right-hand side, you'll be getting the plus or minus. Because in, in, in the real sense you're not getting x. Okay, let me explain that because this is where many people get confused. When you take the square root of, look at this, x squared equals nine. When you take the square root of both sides, what you actually get here is not x, what you get is the absolute value of x. That's something they don't tell you, okay? Because it is possible, why do we have to say it's the absolute value of x? Because it's possible that x was positive or negative, you don't know. Okay, so in this case, what's the square root of nine? It's three. You only take the principal root if this is what you do, which is what we translate into this. So the actual fact is this is what you're doing, but we skip this step and rewrite it this way so that our answer x will be because this means plus or minus three, and that's your answer. So this is the same thing as this is the same thing as this, but we're used to going just from here to here without really explaining this. And you will need this understanding when you start taking limits if you take calculus. Okay, you'll need to understand what this is. So the absolute value of x is basically how far x is from zero. So in this case, you're not sure that x was a positive or a negative number. So why are you assuming that you're gonna get one answer? So you're gonna get two answers and that's the basis for that. Okay, so remember that. Now, there's a different way to solve this. We're not gonna solve this using this by taking the square roots of both sides. What if we consider it as a difference of two squares? Let me rewrite this and then we do that. Okay. I just rewrote this question this way by moving the 9 to the other side or subtracting 9 from both sides and this is what I have x squared minus 9 equals 0. Well I could as well treat this as a difference of two squares and factor out. Well when I factor this out I'm going to get x minus 3, I get x plus 3 equals 0. Well that means this is either 0 or this is 0 so I can say x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. Why do we do this? Well you know the only reason the product of two things will give you 0 is if one of them is 0 or both of them are zeros, okay? So it's either this expression is zero, or this second expression is zero, or actually both of them are zero. That's the only way you'll get a zero from a multiplication. And then if we solve this, we get x is equal to three, or negative three, which is the same answer as we obtained here. So this is the shorthand form, and this is the expanded form, if you call it that way. Okay, so that's that. I just wanted you to see that. Now, you're, you're given this question, x squared plus nine equals zero. As you can see, it does not look like this. This you can treat as difference of two squares because this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. In this case, it's not difference of two squares, it's the sum of two squares, so you can't factor. Well, the only option we have is to move this nine to the other side. So we can say, in this case, that x squared equals negative nine. 
Now we take the square root of both sides. And remember the rule, you're going to get the absolute value of x will be equal to the square root of negative 9. The problem here is, as you know, you can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real answer. So the answer you're going to get here will be imaginary. Okay? So in this case, your x here will be equal to plus or minus 3. But that 3 is imaginary because, um, remember, that you can rewrite square root of negative 9 to the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1, which is 3 times the square root of negative 1 is what you represent as i. And that's why we have this as our answer. So this is the answer you get in this case. I'm going to get rid of this, and then we move over to this. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section, okay? If you don't have a question, make sure you give this video a like. Even if you have a question, still give it a like. Let's move on. Something I know some students have caught themselves doing, which gets them in trouble, is dividing both sides by n. That is a disaster. Don't do it, okay? Never divide by variables, okay? Don't divide by variables. Don't divide both sides. It's better to factor out whatever is common than to divide, okay? Remember that. Never divide both sides by variables. Always divide by constants or just, um, yeah, constants, numbers. So in this case, we don't want to divide both sides by n. So how do we isolate n? Well, why don't you bring everything to the same side and write it as n squared plus 3n equals 0. Now, we can factor the greatest common factor. That gives us n into n plus 3 equals 0. Okay? And what would we get? We're going to get, for the fact that you're getting 0, it's either n equals 0 or n plus 3 equals 0. One of them has to be 0, or both of them have to be zeros. Okay? So you say n equals 0 or n plus 3 equals 0. So your answers will be n equals 3, I mean 0 or negative 3. Those are your possible answers when you solve each of these equations. So those are the answers you get. Okay? n equals 0 or negative 3. Now I need to make a quick, um, a quick point here. Let's say we did not factor out. This is what we're going to get. Let's say you have n squared equals negative 3n. What's going to happen is if you divide both sides by n, you're going to end up with n equals negative 3. See? And you're done. The problem is, when you, when you solve a quadratic, you, only, you always have to get two answers. Even if it means you get n equals negative 3, and, or n equals negative 3, which means you're getting one solution, but uh, with a multiplicity of 2. Okay? You'll understand why you have to get two answers over time. Because it determines the shape of the curve, it determines whatever you do. For example, if you got n equals negative 3, the assumption is that you solved a linear equation because you got only one answer. But if you get two answers, then it means you'll solve the quadratic equation, okay? Because all quadratic equations have two roots, or they have one root with a multiplicity of two. That is, you'll get it twice, which means when you plot the graph, this is why it's important, because you start sketching curves if you have not started. If you, let's say you were given this to plot, and you get n equals negative three, and this is negative three. Well, how do you know? What would you do? Okay? But it, it's just difficult. You can't plot this. But if you got the original answer, n will be equal to 0 or negative 3. So the second point is here. So you know you can just make a rough sketch that goes up like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this is better. But with one point, you can only go through it once. And you didn't get it twice, you got it once. If you got it twice, then it would be something like this. That's why you need to get two answers and never divide both sides by the variable you're looking for. Because you need two of them, not one. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So let's go to D. Now... There are two ways you can do this. You can, just as the way we treated this, this is the difference of two squares also because this is a perfect square. Remember, the perfect square numbers that we have are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. You just keep going until you can no longer count. Okay, so at this point, we're going to solve this saying this is 1 squared minus x squared equals 0. So we can factor. That's 1 minus x, 1 plus x. So if we solve each of these, we're going to get 1 minus x equals 0 or 1 plus x equals 0. And that leaves us with x equals 1, or x equals negative 1. Remember that you could have solved this straight by just moving x squared to the other side and taking the square root of both sides. Let me write it here. You could have done this. Um, 1 minus x squared equals 0. You could have said 1 equals x squared. Okay? And now you take the square root of both sides. This would be plus or minus square root of 1 equals x. And what is the square root of 1? Is 1. So plus or minus 1 equals x, which is the same answer as what we just obtained here. x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. Okay, so you just choose your method, choose your style, and whichever way is convenient for you, use it. 
let's go to something that looks like a real quadratic equation, which we have written here. Okay, uh, I'll make another observation, which I might do in the next uh, part of this video. So for this question, we have a equals one, and this is this and this. Okay, so there are three ways to solve quadratic equations that contain everything. They have a, they have b, they have c. Maybe four ways, okay? One way is to factor. If you can factor a quadratic equation, that's the easiest path to follow. If you can't factor, maybe you should do completing the squares. Now, if completing the squares is not mandatory, just plug it into the quadratic formula. So that gives you an idea of where I'm going with the rest of this uh, video. Because in the second part, I'll focus solely on completing the squares. And in the third part, we'll just be using quadratic formula. Maybe. Okay, let's do this. So I'm going to try to factor this. Remember how to factor if you didn't know. What you want to do is quickly create a puzzle. Okay? The puzzle is such that you're going to put the product of A and C here. So this is 1 times negative 6. That gives you negative 6. You put it on top. Then under, you're going to put the middle um, term, which is plus 5. That's all. That's the puzzle. So you hand this puzzle to a 6th grader or a 10-year-old or whatever, uh, a 12-year-old, and say, I want you to tell me two numbers I can multiply together to get negative 6. Then they're going to say 6 times negative 1, or 1 times negative 6, or 3 times negative 2, or 2 times negative 3, or however they want to think about it. But when I add those numbers together, I want to make sure I get 5. Well, the only answer to that would be 6 times negative 1. That's the only way this product will give you this, and this sum of 6 minus 1 will give you 5. That's the solution. So what you want to do is take these two numbers here and replace this middle term. So we're going to have this. Let's put this away here. So what we're going to have is k squared plus, instead of writing 5k, we're going to write 6k minus k. That has replaced 5k. And then we put this back, minus 6 equals 0. So we can factor what's common to this and this by grouping. So you're going to have k plus 6 um, minus what's common? Well, there's nothing. So we just write k plus 6. You see how the sign changes to plus? Because when you put this in parentheses and you redistribute this, it's going to give you back a negative 6. OK, equals 0. So you have k um, plus 6. These two are common, take them out, and what's outside will be k minus 1. Okay, and then you can solve. So right now you have k equals negative 6 or 1. Okay, you solve each of these, equate them to 0, you're going to get that. So basically, that's what we have here. And one final question for this part of the video will be this one. So this one does not look like a typical quadratic equation, and there are two ways you can go about this. It's either you treat this as a single entity and just say, you know what? I'm going to assume that n minus 2 is n. You can replace it. Where n equals m minus 2. Okay? So you can remember that you're not looking for n, you're looking for m. But when you're done with your calculation, you can go back and, so, and, and, and do that. So that's a very good strategy. Another strategy you can take is, well, you can... Distribute, you can um, foil this out and write n minus 2 times m minus 2. You distribute it, you add 12 to it, then you solve that quadratic equation. But I think uh, I will take this nicer path, okay? So I don't want to expand this and solve it. I'd rather just substitute a number, I mean a letter to represent it. So now I can solve this. So I have m squared will be equal to negative 12. So if I take the square root of both sides, n is going to be plus or minus the square root of negative 12. Uh, that doesn't look pretty because I'm going to have an imaginary number, okay? So... Well, it's okay, but remember, we're not looking for n, we're looking for m. So what is m itself? So this is equal to n minus 2, because n equals m minus 2, but we want to get m, so we have to add 2 to this. So my answer is going to be m will be equal to 2 plus or minus square root of negative 12. And that's it. Then you can go ahead and just simplify the square root of negative 12. Uh, the square root of negative 12 will be... Well, it should be 12i, it should be root 12i, which you can simplify. So let me just give you what your final answer is going to be. It's going to be 2 plus or minus. Well, I know that this is going to be 2 rad 3i. Okay, so if you want to expand this, your answer is going to be m equals 2 plus 2 rad 3i or 2 minus 2 rad 3i. If you want to factor out the 2, go ahead. If you don't want to... It's so beautiful. In fact, it's beautiful from this point, this point, this point. Maybe not this point. You need to simplify your radical. And then here, perfect. Okay? Perfect here. Perfect here. I'll see you in the next part of this video where we'll be talking about completing the squares. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning can stop saving. Bye-bye.